What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to the final AFL Fantasy head to head video for the preseason for 2024. This is episode number 25 of the series. If you haven't checked out all the other episodes, make sure you go and do that. There's still uh, we've still got a couple of weeks, uh, well, less than a couple of weeks to go till round one kicks off. So still plenty of relevant names. So if you want to check out all those episodes, make sure you do and also leave a like on any of the videos and this video as well. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But joining me is another special guest. You'll know him from the Draft Doctors. He does prefer classic over draft. It is Stevie Fizz, mate. How are you? I'm very well, Bales. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Um, I'm just... Uh, Keen for footy to start. Obviously, we've got practice games, but we've got obviously opening round next week. Then we've got the actual round one uh, the week after. So um, I'm sure it is a busy time for, for yourself and the uh, the guys, the draft doctors, mate. Yeah, it is. Uh, we just wrapped up our listener league draft. I got my home league on Sunday. So, yeah, it's it's all about to happen. And just we can just take a breath. That, that first yep. ball's bounced and we just breathe. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, I know that's... That's a good thing with draft is that you can, once the first ball's bounced and your draft's done, you can relax. But classic, we're stressing all the time. So, but, and one of the sort of key decisions that a few people might be making in defense this year is between a couple of value defenders in Jordan Clark and Kadeen Coleman, who could present a bit of value and maybe close in on sort of those top six to eight defenders. You'll be taking Jordan Clark, Fizz, and I'll be taking Kitty Coleman. So, um, how about you get us started off with uh, Jordan Clark? Why should people be looking to select him in their side for 2024? Yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity opened up for, for Jordan Clark. We've seen Hayden Young move into that midfield situation at, at Fremantle. It's opened up a lot of ball. We saw at the end of last year, uh, Jordan Clark was able to score pretty nicely when it was um, him on his own. Other, some other preferred users like um, Heath Chapman, obviously not in that team uh, with injury. So he really should have a pretty free run of it. He's a good user of the ball. Uh, we know what sort of leg speed he has and, and what sort of distance he can cover. So I think I think there's a lot of upside. Uh, I know Coleman has a lot as well. So it'll be it'll be pretty interesting. I just I don't, I don't see much of a, a downside to Jordan Clark, I guess you could say, unless potentially uh, the Hayden Young experiment maybe doesn't work. Which it's hard to see that happening, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But it, but it is, but it could happen. So, yeah, anything could happen uh, in this crazy world of footy. But uh, in terms of the prices, so like they're pretty close together. So Jordy Clark is priced at six hundred ninety-one k, uh, and selected currently in. If I get the ownership up, six point five six percent. So still, still fairly unique, even after his uh, uh, very good game in the practice game against West Coast. I think people might want to see one more game from him, but they like what they saw. And Kitty Coleman a lot more. Highly owned, twenty five point zero five percent. So, with Jordy Clark, do you expect him to be that main distributor, or or do you think Luke Ryan still got a fair bit to say? But there, how do you sort of see that split sort of uh, going on back there? And do you see Jordan Clark maybe pushing himself into the nineties, or do you see him maybe staying in that sort of eighties range? Yeah, it's really interesting. I because he probably won't be the primary user, you kind of hope that he does become it, but it's it's kind of hard to see that happening. I know there's a little bit of chatter about uh, Ryan's potential foot issues and maybe he can't kick the yeah. ball as long or things like that. So there is a world where he um, could become the main option. I find it hard to believe. I think it'd be more like what you saw last year with uh, at St Kilda with, with Sinclair being, you know, top three defender, and then you you get Wangane Miller. I know Wangane Miller was coming off a lower price point, but you know he pushes into that low nineties average. I don't. I think Fremantle are kind of similar in that they're, they're not maybe the speediest ball movement team. Um, so we're looking at guys who a clear value. They're going to push maybe close to that uh, top eight range, but probably won't quite get there. But he doesn't have that buy, which I think is probably. An interesting one because it seems like so many of the value picks this year have that early buy. Yep, exactly. Because like you talk about like Zach Williams, for example, under 500k, he's got the round two buy. Obviously, we'll talk about Kitty Coleman in a sec. He's got the round two buy. And then you can move in other positions like Sam Flanders, your boy, has got the round three buy. You've got like, there's all these options in different positions that all got this early buy. So that's where someone like a Geordie Clark could sort of be that option because he's also got that good round 13 buy. Maybe people have probably traded him by the time those mid-season buys come in, so it might not matter too much. But if you had to put a number on what you think he's going to average, what what, do you, what, do you, what would you put it at or what would your projection say at the moment? 
Yeah, I've got him in the, uh, I think it's 91 to 88 range. So I think that's a really, sorry, sorry I should say 88 to, to 91 range. I think that's nice. I don't think that he has a lot of downside, like I mentioned, but he probably, because of Luke Ryan, maybe potentially doesn't have that uh, same upside as uh, maybe maybe in a perfect world Coleman has. I'm not quite sure he has it for the whole season, yeah. but maybe you're not looking to have it for the whole season. Yeah, because even even with the kick-ins from from last week, I think Luke Ryan still probably had about 70-odd percent of the kick-ins. Jordan Clark had maybe three or four, and I think Aish might have had a couple. So Clark's, sorry, uh, Luke Ryan still got that monopoly back there in terms of all that ball. So I do see what you mean. Like you sort of want that number one distributor guy from a team and Jordan Clark's probably not that guy that's going to be that, but maybe he gets the more of the linking plays and the transitional points rather than sort of your your sort of plus sixes for sort of straight out from the square. So it will be very interesting to see how how he goes. And I'm, I'm really keen to see um, if he can sort of push himself into that 90 range. But we'll move to Kitty Coleman because I originally started with Kitty Coleman. I wasn't too keen on, on, his, on the pick when – like looking at his stat for his stats from last year, he'd only had the I th- believe it, uh, it was only a handful of games where he went over ninety. So just having a look at his scores here, so he went from so in the first sort of well, what's that up to round trying to get up there up to round twenty um, last year, and he got injured in that game, uh, mind you. But he'd only really had the two scores before the over ninety, being a one eleven in round sixteen against Richmond, and then. Ran 19 against um, Gold Coast, where he scored a 105. But before that, his top score for the season was actually only 84. So that's the only concerning thing. But he did finish the year off well um, with a uh, 97, 93, 73. Um, then the, obviously the 106 and the 127 in the grand final. And even in the practice game um, against Gold Coast, he, he looked really good. And I think he had a 48 point first quarter, ended up uh, on getting about an 80 odd in three quarters. So he still was able to get to a solid score in three quarters. And I just saw the first quarter of the uh, Brisbane City game. He was already on 41 points a quarter time. So he's, he's he racking the ball up back there. So, CV, how do you see the mix between, like, the Brisbane defenders going? Like, so you've got Kitty Combat, obviously Rich is no longer there. Darcy Wilmot's back there. Connor McKenna will come back into the side. Obviously, Harris Andrews takes a lot of those intercept marks and gets a lot of that sort of chip mark around the back line. How, do you see Kitty Coleman being that? number one distributor guy, and do you see him being able to push his average up into the high 80s and maybe low 90s? Yeah, I think all, all the things you said are, are pretty well in play. Uh, if we look at Brisbane, the thing they could probably improve on last year was intercepts. Uh, so they've acquired Tom Duday. And uh, so he's another one in the mix, and they're expecting him back in the first month of the season. So I guess that's probably like... You know, you've got these good players, and McKenna was probably the bulk kicking guy last year. Does that like does that concern you about have of his upside? And and like we haven't really seen it for a whole season from Coleman. Yeah, and and that is it's a good point, Rose, because we said it with Jordan Clark, where Luke Ryan's the main guy taking all the kickings and everything, and and it could same could be said with Connor McKenna in terms of kickings. I I do still think I like think they like. Kadeen Coleman is that number one user coming out of the back line. It's just those kick-ins we know with those half-backs can be quite useful because it can bump the average up sort of anywhere from six to 12 points on on any given week. And if Coleman's taking those kick-ins, then he's I think he could comfortably go 90 plus. But with uh, Conor McKenna probably going to take his fair share of the kick-ins. We've seen Wilmot as well. They like Wilmot taking a couple of kick-ins as well. Maybe his average comes down a bit. But from what I've seen sort of in the couple of preseason games I've watched is that they are looking – for him and they are chipping the ball to him and, and and he's finding sort of those areas to to get the ball so that gives me a little bit of confidence that he might be this this guy that we want to sort of take next level because i know obviously i read out the stats from last year but we have seen players in the past from it doesn't matter what position they play they could have stats for well look we say jack sinclair for example he was well i, I can't remember how old he was but it was a couple of years ago that he wasn't fancy relevant star of the year hadn't had any years where we had much success but all of a sudden had that one big year where he really was sort of in that premium um, defender sort of tier and sort of came out of nowhere. And he's been a premium defender that we've considered ever since. And and I'm not saying Kitty Com's going to be that this year, but he's probably that sort of player that could have that year where he goes 90 plus and becomes one of those defender options that we consider. So, but the other thing I want to touch on with Kitty Coleman, the thing that concerns me is that he has had a little bit of an injury history. So just a so soft tissue injury here or there, he might have a good month of footy, then something will pop up. Does that concern you in picking a guy 
in a price range like this, and, and you can even refer to it in, in draft sense as well, does it concern you picking a guy that you may be playing for the upside but maybe has that little bit of an injury history and might not be able to take that full step up? Yeah, it does. It does. And actually, I had to have a quick look at where I had these guys in my ranks, and they're only two two spots apart. But I have got Jordan Clark capping off the end of a tier and, and Kitty Coleman in the next one. I, I like Kitty Coleman as a player. I think he does a lot of nice things, but it probably just comes down to all those sort of I don't know sort of factors, which, you know, you got the buy, you got the sort of maybe check it injury past, you've maybe got these good players coming in. You've got a team who uh, they do play a lot of kick marks, but they do play a lot of stoppages as well. So they're not, yep. you know, they're not one for just hanging on to the ball like Fremantle, I guess you'd say. So there's, there's probably a few things that I'm maybe not in love with in terms of upside. Could could he push into that 90-plus range? 100%. Um, I feel like if he's going to do that, though, he's going to be playing some really, really good footy. Yeah. Yeah, like he's yeah. he's probably got to have that sort of. If he goes nineties, he's going to be probably an all Australian, really, as you say. I think that he does have a big impact on the game. Like he he might only have sixty points, but he might have had a really good game. Like he might have shut his opponent down and and sort of had a bit of ball on the outside. But he might have sort of twenty touches with sixteen kicks and only have one mark and maybe a couple of tackles. There's there's sort of not he's not normally that guy that will take those six, seven, eight marks a game. So, but as I said in the preseason games, it was good that they were looking for him. So there's potential for that upside um if i was to probably put an average on him now i'd probably say i'd have anywhere from sort of that 84 to 87 88 point range sort of that mid to sort of higher end of this 80s i'm not sure he's got the upside to well no he does have the upside to go over 90 but i don't know if i see him being the consistent guy across the whole season and then pushing into the 90s but i think it is Definitely possibility, but obviously with Tom Preseason, we're all about projections and rankings and stuff like that. So this is just what I'm putting him at. Do you have him around the same sort of mark? Do you have him a bit less, a bit more? Sort of where would you project his average um, going into the season? Yeah, he's in the same range. It's just there's a couple more questions than Clark. That And that's all. I, I guess if you're picking him in fantasy, my, my question would be – sorry, I should say classic. My question would be, are you picking him as a keeper or are you picking him – because everything's at the best for him at the start, right? Like, you know, the yeah. other potential competition's not not there. You, you know, he's coming off a lowish price point relative, so he's going to generate you some cash. Are you just picking him up to to make some money and then ship him off? Because, like, and I'm not the world's greatest classic player, but my question would be is if you're planning on doing that, do you then find yourself in a sticky situation where it's around the round five, six buys, where maybe or round right round five and six, where there's other players who are on by that you might need to move as well, and then you're like, well, I need to move Coleman, but I can't, or it, like that. You know what I mean? Like we all have yep. these little plans in our minds, but then we, go, you know, reality <laughs> happens, and you yeah. get an injury, yes. and yeah, exactly, exactly right, and it's 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 hard with him because, and I like D, like actually DC on on the hat, on the hat chat uh, actually said a good point when looking at these guys that aren't premiums and they're like the mid-price guys and putting them in categories like meaning to A's is they can match it with the top sort of six in their line. Sort of the B um, grade is like, here. Yeah, they're not quite uh, to the premium level, but they're a little bit behind, but they make a lot of cash. The C is sort of they're not going to make enough cash and they're um, sort of not quite close enough. And then the, obviously your dud pick. So the, I could see Coleman being a guy that falls into one of those bottom categories where he doesn't, doesn't quite close the gap enough on the top six and averages sort of those mid to high 80s. And he doesn't make enough cash that you can get up to a, let's say, Nick Dacos off his buying round in round uh, five and then get him in round six. So it's sort of, it's it's hard sort of to gauge what Kitty Coleman could be. So in terms of like that grain system that DC was using, would you, are you having him a guy that can match it with the top six or are you having him as that guy that might be the sort of the C or D where it might be, he doesn't quite make the cash you want and he doesn't average what you want. So it might just be a bit of a pick where sort of almost a nothing pick really. Yeah. And, and I think, I think this is kind of where I find myself trapping myself in classic in years gone by is because these guys are great in draft, right? You pick, you know, yep. they're coming in as like the 40th defender. They finish as the 18th, whatever. That's great. That's great value. But, you know, in classic, they're kind of, they're not, you know, they're in no man's land, right? 
Like, and yeah. I probably throw Will Will Powell in the same category. Like, I love Will Powell this year, but he's he's in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. And Jordy Clark, it could be in the same boat as well. You're not quite sure yeah. if he goes up. There's a lot of guys. I think Yo in that sort of this price bracket here um, is probably the one that you can expect him to go overnight. Just his his body. But there's a lot of guys in that sort of that five six hundred k. Is like, are they going to do enough to make the cash? Are they going to average enough? So, and then the thing, other thing, last point with Kitty Con, we'll touch on before we sort of pick who we'd be picking, is that round two buy is a bit of a sort of stumbling block for me as well. Is Jordy Clark doesn't have that, don't have to worry about it. Whereas Kitty Con round two, would he be a guy that you wait for his round two buy to pass? You watch your opening round, round one, round two comes is buy comes along and then you can sort of reassess it and may bring him in round three. Is that what you'd be doing? Or do you think if he puts up a good score in round zero, say a hundred or whatever, would you be happy to start with him, get that sort of cash gen flowing? And if he maybe doesn't have a good game round one, you can maybe ship him on in round two to maybe someone else. What, what are your thoughts with that? Yeah, it's an interesting one. If he has that good score, you'd probably consider it. Um, the problem for me is I have to have Lockie Whitfield. Like I can't leave. Yeah. Um, without Lockie Whitfield, and I just find like, and you know, then you got Gorn, you got Grundy, you got all these dudes who are on by, and I just like, I like Kitty Coleman. If if there was no round by, you'd probably there was no by, you'd start with him for sure. I just find it so hard to have so many of these dudes. Yeah, it's I, I we think it's just pick, a miss. Yeah, I know we could pick a whole team of players that have got this opening round. Like it's it's crazy how many sort of relevant players are going to be in this opening round, and, and it does suck a bit. You've got like your Dacos and your Tom Green, Gerald Gould, and Sam Flanders. I know a few people might be starting a Flanders just because the forward line's so barren, and he's probably going to be one of those sort of clear top forwards. So it's it is so very very interesting this opening round. I'm, I'm really keen to see how everything shakes out, but. It is time to pick who we'd be picking between the two. So, Steve, is if you had to pick between Jordan Clark and Kitty Con for twenty twenty four, who are you picking? Well, I've actually got Jordan Clark in my team. <laughs> so there you um, go. Yeah, it's Jordan Clark. Yeah, yeah. Screw, I'm, screw I'm myself the, again. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I think I'm the same as well. I think that buy does sort of come into my thinking. I think it is a good play to. Watch Kitty Coleman. Obviously, people watching would have known by the time this comes out how he went in the Brisbane uh, City practice game and, and round, obviously round zero next week as well. Maybe we can reassess in, but I just think that round two by, I, I think worst case is going to go up maybe to 700K and then you can get him, but that's still fine to bring him in if if he's, if he's going at a 95, 100 or whatever. And then if he's only going back that 90, 85, then maybe just don't worry about it. So I'm I'm on Jordan Clark. I'm keen to see how Jordan Clark goes this weekend, um, I think being to Port Adelaide to practice game, so um, see how he goes in that one. Um, do you have Kitty Coleman as well, or just Jordan Clark at this moment? No, nah, just just Jordan Clark at the minute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he might be. I've... Kitty, they're both great players to pick up in draft. Just just grab one of them there and move on. Exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah, and you can you can, yeah you can enjoy them in draft. That's it. So that's the good thing about playing draft and classic. You have players in draft and classic, and, and all as well. So um, yeah, I currently don't have either. Um, I, I'm. Again, as I said, the round two buys a bit of a sticking point for me. I've got Hayden Young over John Clark at the moment, but my mind could be swayed because I uh, just want to see Hayden Young goes. Um, I think Holmes, as Holmes was saying, he's probably not quite that lock um, that we were saying, but he's still pretty um, pretty hot on him, and, and we'll see how he goes in the practice game this week. But, um, yeah, John Clark, very, very interested. So, But that'll do it. That will do it for the final episode of the Head Ted Series. Appreciate everyone that tuned into every episode of the series so far. Again, there's still time to check out all 25 of the episodes. Make sure you go and do that. Um, like the video if you enjoyed the content as well. And subscribe to the channel as we make our way to 2,000 subscribers. Uh, we're nearly at 1,500 as well. So appreciate all the support you guys show. Um, and also social media links in the description below. If you listen to the podcast, um, please leave a five-star rating and review. Appreciate all the people that have listened to the podcast versions of this as well. See you, Fizz, mate. Thank you very much for jumping on for the final episode of the series. Where can the people find you across the socials? And uh, I know we they keep, you guys keep saying, New listeners, there's no go. But where can the people, where can where can the people find the draft doctors on the podcast? And then also you want to talk about the also the draft kit as well because that's still very relevant as people get into their drafts uh, just on the eve of the season. Yeah, so we're at the draft doctors on Twitter and the draftdoctors.com.au on the interwebs and all our stuffs there. The mock draft um, practice tool and and the draft kits there and the ranks are updated sort of. Um, <laughs> Some of the point. Yeah. I think Luke Parker. <laughs> Everyone gets injured. What's what the hell's going to happen yeah. this weekend? Like, yeah, Parker, you know, know, we just upload them, and then Luke Parker breaks his arm. Unbelievable. Yeah. 
I know how you feel. I did the uh, Cam Guthrie Early Wines episode with uh, Stato. Cam Guthrie gets injured. I did Heath Chapman and Zach Williams with with Louis. Heath Chapman got injured, and Zach Williams is sort of we don't quite know what's happening with him. So a couple of uh, unfortunate injuries with a couple of the guys. So hopefully, uh, no more no more injuries. Hopefully, that's what we're doing. We, we can have a clean bill of health yeah. into the first round of the season. But um, good luck to everyone um, for the upcoming season. Obviously, I have more content next week. Um, coming out, we have a few different uh, bits and pieces as we sort of ramp up towards the season. But uh, thank you very much to Steve for jumping on. Follow him and all the Draft Doctors stuff as well. Do great stuff over there. And until the next time we see you, we'll catch you guys in the next one. So we're out. Cheers.